Hey guys, welcome back to part number six of my Eurofighter build. We're making really great progress. As you saw last part, we did the decals, and now we're moving on to weathering. We're making great progress with this build. So in today's episode, we're going to see pan line wash, and then also some light weathering with some neat oils. I'm not going to go crazy on this one because it kept in pretty good condition. But let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let's get weathering. So, weathering is pretty much in the eye of the beholder. There's um, people like to do different things. Some people like weathered aircraft. Some people like nice and clean. I personally like it on a little bit on the weathered side, just because it takes that toy look away. If you look at it right now, it looks a little bit like a toy. It's just shiny and plastic. Also, um, with adding a wash, power line wash, it kind of brings out that detail and also kind of blends in the color a little bit too. Um, often on forums, I see beautiful painted and built models which kind of just look like this. I think at the minimum you at least, at least need a panel line wash just to kind of get that detail and kind of bring it out a little bit. So we're going to do two stages here. We're going to do panel line wash and then we're going to do a neat oils to get a little bit more grime and dirt on it. We're not going overboard and crazy on this because these are kept pretty nice and clean. But again, we just want, I just want to take that away from the kind of toy-like look and just kind of make it a little bit more kind of model-like. So Decals are on, on the last video as you know. Um, since the decals are on, we sprayed it again with some LP9, another gloss coat. And that really kind of, two things, it seals on the decals, so when we go rubbing the stuff with a wash, it's not gonna rip off the decals. And secondly, we need a gloss coat for power line wash. If I didn't put a gloss coat on, it's really gonna get stuck in all this kind of text, any texture and paint work where we don't want it. I just want it in the power lines. And it'll come off a lot easier. So it's crucial, if you want just a power line wash, to use a gloss coat. If you want it just totally dirty and stuck everywhere, go matte. But again, that's a problem. All problems we see, especially on the forums, um, with people using clay wash, is that they say, I can't get it off, it's stuck, it's whatever. But they're not using gloss coat first, which is, again, the key. So, as always, oops. as always, we're going with the flory models and dark dirt. Anything kind of gray like this, dark dirt's the way to go. Get it a little bit low. So I'm but should have enough just to get this covered. So give it a good shake, and then good practices to count it. Just because if you put a brush, if I put a brush straight in the bottle here, and it's got some stuff on here, I don't know, some same solution or whatever it may be, it might react and, and ruin your batch. So it's always good just to kind of do it in a little cup right here. Okay, and really it's pretty straightforward. All I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna brush this all over everywhere. And then when I'm done, I'm just going to um, let it dry and then we're gonna wipe it off. And it should just be in the gloss coat, it should just let, let it stay in a power line and the, the detail. Here we go, so like this, straightforward, just brush it on.
and that is it pretty straightforward you can see nothing difficult with that just splodging it on now um, I'm just gonna leave that to dry about 30 minutes is what I like to leave it for and then I'll come we'll go ahead and wipe it off I don't like to leave it too long because the longer you leave it the harder it doesn't get off probably so 30 minutes to 45 minutes seems to be kind of like sweet spot so I just took a little bit of care around some of these bits that stick out because when I come to remove it I didn't want to kind of rip these off so I kind of went around them a little bit um, but yeah everything else is pretty much covered and um, the upper side first and then we'll get that, that wash off and then we'll do the underside afterwards so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just let that dry and we'll come back and then we'll, we'll talk about removing it okay it's been about 30 minutes or so and we're dry as you can see and it's time to get the wash off so nothing scientific about this just bits of paper towel and just we're just going to wipe it off circle motions looks really good and if it's a little stubborn just I just give it a little lick um, or a little dab of water and it rehydrates the clay and comes right off nice thing about this clay wash too is if you do not like it you can just go ahead and just um, with some water just it comes right off it rehydrates so it's a real nice thing especially for beginners so starting with this wing right here let's get again let's give a little dab of um, get saliva on the paper towel and as you can see it comes off pretty good but I'll leave a little bit behind for dirt obviously and it stays in the panel lines as well and you want to do airflow so with aircraft it's always front to back if you're doing armor it's up and typically up and down So I'm really going to get the main bulk off with this and then come back with a clean piece and get rid of all the, um, the leftover stuff. Already you can see how I see the panel lines are really kind of popping out now. Again, nothing really scientific about removing this stuff, just straightforward, just rubbing it off with a bit of paper towel. Pretty hard to reach areas, always you use one of these guys too. These work great. Just gonna get in there into the along the spine here. So that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on the other side. There we go. So as easy as that. Just be careful getting the raised parts like these little kind of flaps and these little guys on the side. And I've got a couple of little photo etch bits on the back here too. Just a little bit careful so I don't rip it off. Um, but with a clear coat, see the decals are all intact, no problem there. And yeah, left a little tiny bit of grime left, but overall just really kind of picking out those panel lines. So now you can quite clearly see, you know, these kind of long side here and again on the other side. It's just a nice subtle way of doing things. Right back. 
And again, you can see how this is all kind of picked out now. You can actually see this detail. Um, no real rivets on this, this is a modern jet. So, I mean, if you have rivets, you see all the rivet detail too. Um, but that's pretty much it for the upper side. So I'm now go ahead and see, um, I'll do the same thing on the other side. And then when I'm done, we'll come back and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, the wash is on and the wash is off. Really happy how it turned out. A little bit grimier on the bottom, but sorry, let me just zoom out a little bit and you can see. Um, yep, that's the way it should be. I didn't touch the gear bays. We're going to talk about those in a minute. And looking really good. So you see, it picks up all that detail. And we're good. So next up, we're going to do the wheelbase and I'm going to use the AK Interactive Landing Gear Wash and this one looks really good just going to lightly put some on a little bit goes a long way with this stuff just kind of again put it in it's looking a little bit dark so what I do is just going to add again with a cup Q tip. Just work some extra stuff away. Just leave some of the in the panel and cut the lines. You just want this wash just to pick out the detail. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this so hit this here. The wash has just come off. It's um, I'm gonna be for like an hour at least, probably a few hours to be honest with you. Just make sure everything's fully cure and again with no big brush. And then once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and hit the flat coat for this, which will be the XF86 flat clear. Make diluted 50/50 with I use X20A the acrylic thinner. Um, actually a little bit, maybe about 70/30. So 70% thinner is to 30% clear. So I'm gonna spray the whole thing. Uh, upper and lower then then it'll be left for like another 12 hours at least maybe a day and then we'll come back and we'll do the final stage which is going to be some neat oil wearing you need the flat coat um, for neat oils just really to kind of so it sticks it's kind of the opposite to what we use a gloss coat for for the um, panel line wash for this we want um, this xf86 we want the flat clear if we use gloss if we haven't had them gloss now put neat oils on it just rub right off it wouldn't stick at all so you need something for it to grip to I'm not going to go crazy with neat oils on this one. Like I said before, it's um, a pretty well-kept aircraft. It's not like left out in Siberia in the flight line for 30 years, getting grimy like the Russian stuff. It's just kept pretty nice. So we're just going to pick out a few areas and do neat oils. Um, really happy how the bottom side in particular this is looking. It's looking really good. See how appreciating coming through mixed with the some of that weathering we used. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this video. Sorry, I'm not going to finish the video. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, finish a section and we'll come back later and um, we'll do a flat coat and we'll talk about knee oils okay so as you can see it's now had the matte mat coat added for the oil wash so you see the um, the shine's gone off and it's looking a little bit different so the matte coat's off I'd sprayed it probably about three days ago to be honest you have been pretty busy and I had a chance um, to kind of hit it before then so it's definitely dry and um, cured and that kind of stuff you don't need to wait that long um, usually about 12 hours 24 hours is enough but okay it's been a few days so we'll go ahead and start the weathering process now with the oils so I'm not going to go crazy on this I've mentioned before these got these jets are pretty new um, although can you believe it they're 20 years old already it's kind of crazy how time flies um, so it's going to be lightly weathered I'm not going to go crazy um, I try not to go crazy but I sometimes get a little carried away but just going to go simple with the neat oils and I'm going to use this guy which is smoke which is one of my favorite colors and this these things last forever um, these 502 oils they um, yeah used very tiny little bits you'll see in a minute and they, they go on forever and ever so I'm just going to go one color I'm not going to do hydraulic stains like I usually do and all the rest of the stuff in different shades like I say I'm not going to go crazy I'm just going to do a simple kind of um, neat oil kind of effect 
Um, my usual brushes are used for oils. I have just a little brush for applying it. And then a couple of brushes this is really stiff, which I like this brush. Um, it's good for kind of, kind of um, focus. Hold a bit back. It's good for um, blending and kind of smearing and that kind of stuff. This one's a little bit softer, this brush here. Um, so a few brushes and a little bit of enamel thinners. This is, happens to be to make um, odorless thinners. And that's pretty much it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of oil and you can put some little cardboard. I'm just going to use a paper towel and put a little bit on. And literally, that is probably all we need. So we don't need much at all. So let's put lid on so it doesn't dry out. Now, being matte, it means it's going to stick to us. When I start, first started doing this technique, it never worked for me because I had a kind of satin or a gloss coat. And it, when as soon as you try to blend anything, it just immediately rubs straight off. So it's kind of pointless. So, <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my brush. Okay, wipe off some extra. A bit more my finger and then I'm just going to run across the kind of panel lines I want to do so let's start with the kind of the middle here so I'm going to run you see I'm just kind of drawing it on that's one up here okay on there and then this side Again, like I said, I don't want to go crazy with this. It's, it's going to be pretty clean. Just want to pick out a few of these lines. So, start with that. And then I'll get my brush. And literally just blend it in. Going with the direction of the power line. That one I did right there is a little bit um, too much, so I can come back and take some off with a, with a cotton bud or a Q-tip in a minute. I must have some um, on my brush already before I started, I think, because it's just very kind of thick. And you kind of see it just gives that little effect. It's going to mellow out too as it dries. It takes take a few days to dry. brush to this guy So just taking my Q-tip, and if it's a little too much, just a little bit of thinners, I'm just going to put here in the, the lid, just dip it, and just a little bit, just And that just dials it back a little bit. Back on the brush. Drop my brush. Now this gets a little bit, this is the APU exhaust right here, so look at my reference picks, that does get a little bit kind of dirty and grimy, so I'm just going to add a little bit, kind of dab it on a little bit there, and then... Brush it all in, blend it in. Needs a little bit more. A 
and that creates the effect from the APU exhaust. So that's pretty much it. Um, let me go through, I'm going to do a couple more power lines. Again, I don't want to go crazy with this, I'm just going to do a couple along the bottom of the wings, and the flaps of the wings, and a little bit on the tail, and we'll call it a day. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and work on some of this stuff, and um, just we'll get going. So. Okay, so, sorry if that wasn't quite in the camera shot, but it's kind of hard. i got a tripod kind of next to me and trying to get this done. So, this color is actually pretty strong, the smoke for this gray. Um, a little bit goes a long way, as you saw. So, I basically, what I was using, as you can see, was a bit of paper towel just to wipe, um, wipe away some of the extra oil. And then where it's really thick, I went back and just dipped it again in some... Um, some little bit of enamel thinners just to wipe it all off basically so again i don't want to go too crazy i did it quite maybe gone a little bit too much it's going to subtle dry back and it's going to be more subtle um give it a quick rub just going to take a little bit sorry i'm just taking a little bit more off these wings again i don't want it too dirty but i do want it weathered okay so then what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do a few little streaks on the um, flaps. So just a dot, a couple of little dots here and there, and maybe one up here. I'm just going to take my brush and just streak it back. Again, a little too much, so I'm just going to come back and get some of that off. Just direction the flow to get some of these dirt on. Okay, and that looks pretty good. So a little bit extra, like I said, for the APU exhaust, um, but overall, kind of happy how that turns out. It's going to again fade back. Um, I do like my jets a little dirty side. Let's maybe like I say it's a pretty strong color, so. Just gonna wipe some off the other side. So that's it. So I'm gonna put that to the side, um, leave it for well, ideally two or three days for the oils to dry. Although it seems to dry pretty quick, especially the weather right now. Um, I did go ahead and make up some of the other little parts 
so like the, the front flaps or the canards, what we call them. So while we've got the um, the brushes here, we can go ahead and just weather those up the same way so it all matches. So just going to add a little bit again on panel lines. Just a little bit, just to so it kind of ties in. Now, now these are um, to be honest with you, these are actually gloss coat, and it's actually looking. But this color paint, with this dark color on the light, is actually working better because it's actually coming off a little bit easier than the matte. To be honest with you. So painted up some of the doors for the wheelbase. Same thing, just add a little bit here and there. Now, if you notice, when I paint my doors, I like doing the sprue, um, just because you know what numbers they are, and it makes it a little bit easier. Especially some of these models, we have like tons of um, like parts make up the doors. Some of the Russian stuff has lots of complex parts. It just makes it a little easier. So when you put it together at the end, so I just paint them on the sprue. Um, so I do that, and looking at, it, I think that's pretty much it. So. Like I say, this is um, that pretty much completes the weathering. I will not do any kind of coat on top of the um, oils. That's it. I did, I did a matte coat before I do oils, so that's pretty much. Like I say, won't do anything else. So that wraps up this video as a pretty another long one, but going through some of the weathering, um, just a simple wash and some neat oils. That's all I did on this. Um, so this is penultimate part. Next week will be the final part, and that'll be a little bit simpler. It'll just be the final touches, adding the wheels and the aerials and tenors, that kind of stuff, um, and then it'll be finished. So next week will be the final part. So it's been an enjoyable build. Um, really kind of liking how it's turning out, um, and hope you're enjoying it as well. So see you next time. Have a good one, and goodbye.